Ten Beats to Review. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Right by your lives, it's prequels! Prequels as far as the eye can see! Oh no! Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, mostly I hear prequel and I think of, you know, the Star Wars prequels. Oh god, no! no. no, no. Oh no, no, let's go, let's go. Okay, today has been a very really awesome episode. <laughs> no, I can't no, can do it with a straight face. And also joining us is, well, he haven't been here for a long time now, and I'm happy to welcome James Cork. Hmm, what's this? Sounds familiar. The, oh my god, it's you too, guys. How did you stumble upon this show? What the hell? <laughs> is it the apocalypse already? Have we all been gathered to be put in the gutter? Nah, not yet. Welcome to our nightmare, James. Oh no! <laughs> it's a, uh, it's it's four comics in a row. We're doing this again. Oh, God, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! Oh God, now you mentioned it. Yes. Oh, to, okay. For you guys at home who are probably wondering what we're talking about, uh, way back in the days, we did this review comic for Finship is Magic, and the bright idea we had was to do it back to back. <laughs> but instead of being in one episode, we made it dedicated to, well, basically, each episode or each issue. So we had five, and we recorded it back to back, so that makes it five hours. So have fun. <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yes. We had lots of caffeine. Yeah. Java, 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 Java. But you know, honestly, I don't think it was five hours. It could be four hours and a half, because the... Siren comic was very short. Yeah, that was basically, it sucks, let's move on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. And that is not even canon now, because of reasons. <laughs> were the comics ever canon? Some of them were, because King Sombra's storyline was kind of cool. But, you know, the the way that... The, you know what, this is another discussion for another day. Uh, today we're going to do the prequel comics, so... <laughs> uh, <laughs> The prequel comics to the movie, that the movie is canon as well, therefore the comics are also canon, or are they not canon? Uh, or know. what is a canon? Uh, well, it's a large projectile weapon that was often used on ships and battlement emplacements. <laughs> <laughs> and if you listen to one slightly confused uh, uh, historian, poor St. Ignatius was shot in the balls with a cannon leg. Oh. Oh, God. But anywho, but anywho, um, in, in today's episode, we are going to talk about the prequel, uh, the movie prequel comics. So, uh, a short summarization. Each issue serves as a standalone original story for some of the newer characters in the film, but also part of an overarching plot that spans all four issues, which is really interesting. Before we get into it, let's go for first impressions. And Silver, what do you think, man? Well, I had a lot of fun with these comics. Unlike uh, Fiendship is Magic, I don't think there was a a siren's issue point. There's no point where I was like, oh, that was just not fun. Uh, I think each one did well to flesh out the characters in the movie, and when we get to the movie, I'll have a lot to say about them needing being fleshed out. There were there are some facts that contradict here and there, but again, we'll get we'll tackle that as it comes. But it was fun to just get to see these characters act on their own, see how they reach certain points, why they do what they do. But there were also some characters exclusive to the comics that I was like, oh, I want to see more of them. Maybe they'll come back. <laughs> uh, probably, probably. And what about you, James? You were saying that everything has an overarching storyline that makes it interesting. And I will say, and completely pointless as well. Because the the thing with the... I think that is no need to even uh, gloss over it. So the... the Something, something Malachite, the mysterious Malachite, the whatever it is, oh. Malachite. Oh, the misfortune Malachite. Misfortune Malachite, yeah. I knew it was a word starting with the letter M, because they love the alliteration in MLP, why not? <laughs> uh, it's completely pointless. It's the most MacGuffin, is the MacGuffinist Mac- MacGuffin that ever MacGuffin. Uh, because it has no impact to nothing, it doesn't matter. The only reason for it to exist is to present the characters, and thankfully, the characters are very well presented. And even though they have the same art, uh, art uh, artist, uh, Andy Price, really knocking it out of the park with every single issue, the comics have very distinctive uh, aesthetic and tone, which I thought was very good. I mean, the and the one thing is, it's going to we're going to bring it up in the discussion, but I hate how the Tempest one is the last one. That should have been the first one, hmm. and then. The other, the other three. 
All right, all right. And as for me, this comic was how do I put this? It was nice to read, but not really needed to a point. Some of the characters here were flushed out. We got to know some of the motivations for some of the characters, especially Capper, because Capper here was kind of uh how do I put this? Out of nowhere character for his face turn in the movie. So this comic kind of lay out his characteristics a bit. So we got a general idea of oh, Capper was not really this and this. And also we get to see a bit of another side to Tempest. Like, oh, she was kind of the loner from the very beginning. Blah, blah, blah. So on, so on, so on. And the prequel here sets up a bit of the characters. But, how do I put this? In the long run or in the bigger picture, it doesn't really matter for a few characters. But hey, um... But in the end, it doesn't even matter. matter. Oh, God. But anyway... <laughs> You bring it up, and I'm going to follow you on that one. Mm -hmm. Copper is the emotional core of the first three issues. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was building up to that. The, the last issue should have been the, the third one. It should have ended with, no, he was never my friend. Just Copper putting on the coat and becoming the con artist that we know from the movie. That, that he does have emotional baggage, and he, he has a lot more going on for him than just, oh, I'm going to con these ponies because reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is neat how they try to tie the third issue onto the fourth. And unless they were trying to make the point that, oh, Tempest is the loner, therefore she has to be the one that has no connection to the other three uh, characters introduced. I don't think the, the comics are that smart. Let's just put a pin on that till we reach Yeah, it. I'm yeah. getting ahead of myself. Yeah, yeah. I can, because I, 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 I'm kind of excited about it. Same here, because I have a lot to say about the fourth comic. Because, you know what, uh, if you guys at home have not read this comic yet, I highly suggest that you do. Even though we had gripes with the comics, we highly recommend you read it because it's kind of quote-unquote related to the movie. So, go read it. And welcome back. I hope you enjoy the comics and I hope you kind of agree with what you have to say. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are very fast, right? fast readers. I know. Uh, but anywho, we start off with the Storm King. The Storm King here. What do you guys think of him? Because to me... Uh, to have this kind of character in the movie or in My Little Pony, I, it's like, how to put this? From far away, I know what's going to happen to him. He's not going to be the most outstanding villain out of them all. Like, he's just there. And the most frustrating part for me with him is that they call Sherry Liver, the guy who played Sabretooth in X-Men Wolverine Origins. Everybody talks about Liv Schreiber because he played uh, Sabertooth, Sabertooth yes. in, Wolverine, in Wolverine Origins. What a terrible movie and role to always relate him to. He was also the Mancurian candidate. He was the editor of the Boston Globe in Spotlight. He has very good roles and very good movies, but no, everybody remembers him because of the worst X-Men movie ever made. <laughs> It's got to be the present. <laughs> but still, but here's the thing. Uh, I'm not defending X-Men Wolverine's origins, but that movie in terms of Sabretooth was much better than what they gave us Sabretooth in the X-Men trilogy. That was in Silver Talking. That was me. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I was like, okay. let's get our names right. <laughs> so, it's been so long. It's been so long. But, okay. It was supposed to be two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, so... But, <laughs> James, uh, my point is, my point is, uh, Chevy, uh, Sh Sh Chevrolet. No, I, I know, I know, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Is that when uh, an actor is usually known for the most pop culture roles that they have portrayed, people don't know Alfred Molina because he was in Chocolate. They know Alfred Molina because he was Doctor Octopus on the second Spider-Man movie. Nobody knows the actors for the 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 roles that form their career. They know them for the roles that. Bring the most money to <laughs> yeah. the box office. Yeah, but still, uh, putting that aside, the Storm King here was okay. Uh, to be honest, I thought he was very entertaining. I wish he was a different kind of villain. Maybe Hasbro was trying to create this interesting villain where, okay, he was kind of a buffoon, but uh, Kefka, like, yeah, Final Fantasy V's. Kefka. Was it six? I forgot. Was it six? Is it six? Yes, okay. Uh, Was it six? Yeah. You're, you're not comparing Kefka to... You're not comparing no, the no, Storm King to saying, Kefka. I was hoping... How dare you? No, I'm just saying I was hoping for <laughs> that. 
<laughs> that kind of role where okay, Kaskal the fool, uh, the Storm King was kind of the fool, but he was a badass. But no, nah, he was just a fool. Uh boy, I'm I'm getting ahead of myself. Silver, you haven't been talking much. Well, what do you think, man? Well, does that mean in the next movie we'll be comparing the villain to Sephiroth? I hope so. <laughs> And it will be boys based at McFarlane. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow, that killed Norman. So I know what the the new villain will be the one winged Alicorn. <laughs> one winged Alicorn. Uh, oh, God. Twilight Sparkle. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Finally, Twilight fulfills her destiny of becoming evil. Here's the funny thing: I like the Storm King more in the comic than I did in the movie. You start the comic off, and he's just in bed, reading up, trying to be breaking the fourth wall a la Pinkie Pie. And you get this whole demonstration of him and how he operates, and how he views the world. When I first read it, it was surprising to know this guy has no magical power. So it's like, well, why are you called the Storm King then? He's like, oh, I am the king who is a storm. And he starts giving this pep talk. Part of it was timing. I just read a book called uh, Warrior, Magician, Lover, King. Hmm talking about the male archetypes and the, and their sh- and their shadows. And the Storm King almost fit the shadow of the king to a T, the tyrant, the guy who believes there's only so much control or power in the world, so he has to scoop it all up. And the way he, sh- he demonstrates control is by playing the buffoon. They're about to do an invasion. He worries about hats. He goes into uh, the royal chambers of his defeated foe, and he just talks about, you know, whatever, the weather, Taking it easy. He never wants to you to think that he's worried about stuff because he is in control. And, and yet by the end, when his assistant betrays him, you see he takes his stuff very seriously and the, the act drops away. I mean, he calls himself a force of nature, but a tornado doesn't vent its rage. It just does its thing. A tsunami does not roar if it hits a wall. I have to put a point on what you said, Silver, because you mentioned... Uh, how you like him in the comics. I too agree with that because when I was talking about the Storm King, I was putting it in a generalization because I recently watched the movie again. And yeah, you know what? I'm going to put my opinion of the Storm King for the movie there. But over here, I do highly like him. He's manipulative. He plans ahead. He's just, my goodness. Like the reason why he just wants to conquer is just, do you know how much it costs to put maintenance on an army it costs a lot of money i need to get those money somewhere well why do you even need an army because i need to control things why do you need to control things because there's only so much control in the world <laughs> you know and you guys so you guys you guys keep talking about how the storm king was in the movie was he in the movie i yeah, don't really I, remember I'm for just... about five minutes <laughs> for about five minutes in total uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go there. We're gonna go over that when we get to the movie discussion. Believe me, that's something that we have to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true that, true that. But yeah, no, I'm, I, I am with, I, I am with both of you. When it comes to the Storm King in the comic, he is a lot more interesting. He does remain intimidating. He is a presence throughout the the first two issues, and then in the fourth one, um, and he is he is like a funner version of Sombra and Tyrek combined. He's having fun. None of the other MLP villains had. The, the Chrissy is always, uh, Chris Alice is always uh, super serious. Yeah. Nightmare Moon is always super serious. Uh, Sombra doesn't <laughs> say a word and looks just, crystal <laughs> pony slaves. Rawr. And Tirek just wants to destroy pens and have power. Like the, the only villain antagonist that MLP has had that was having a modicum of fun was Discord. And also Starlight. Gleamy was kind of like that, yeah, but she was more like sadistic, I need to bend all my rage sort of villain than, than Discord was. Discord was closer to the Joker. Gleamy was more like Two-Face, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if, if that comparison makes sense. But I mean, I don't say that the Storm King is on the same level of Discord, but I mean it's closer to Discord than he is to all those other villains that we have had until this point. Yeah, yeah. And... The Storm King in the comic is pretty awesome. That's why I was having high hopes that his character would be awesome in the movie and so on. But like I mentioned before, his first move or his first appearance is to take over 
the capital of what was it again? <laughs> uh, uh, Abyssinia. 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 Yeah. Abyssinia. A cat country. Yay! So all furry artists have something new to do. So cats are a thing now. Yay! You know why they're so easy to conquer, right? Why? Why? Because it's a complete pussy fest. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I was gonna make a joke along the lines of, oh, it's not a good idea to go after full affinity when you want to merge your empires, but your joke is a lot better. Oh god, okay, okay, okay. But anywho. Uh, they're a bunch of pussies, of course they give up. <laughs> god, no. Uh, but anywho. It's like taking over friends. Oh, I mean, oh god, on. no. <laughs> uh, but anywho. His first action in the comic was to take over Epsinia and so on. And we get to see, hey, the king and queen uh, <laughs> surrender immediately. Wow. Uh, no, they were a fight. And they explain that, oh, uh, our country is based on trading. You take stuff away from us, we got nothing to trade. Uh, how could you? Oh, no. At the same time, we are introduced to Kepper and his friend. What was it again? Chum- 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 Chummer. Chummer, yes. Chummer. Yes. Yeah. So we get introduced. Now available on the MLP Game Love game for six dollars. Oh god, not gonna buy. But anywho, we, we, we <laughs> of course get, not. We get introduced to them and so on, and yeah, uh, we get a quick flashback of the Storm King and his personality, and he says that he doesn't trust friends. Friends are a liability. He thinks that it's a weakness, and we've seen this line over and over again from previous villains, from previous stories. And in MLP, you say that, that no, it doesn't work. Friendship is magic and friendship is power. And so on. And while the Storm King is in bed, we get invaded by pirates. Hey. Colorful. Parrot pirates. Yes. Bird pirates. Yes. So. You know, when, hmm? when they first released the concept art for the movie, I thought they were gonna play it as a joke. Mm-hmm. That the pirates were gonna be Parrot size. <laughs> yeah, oh so it was gonna be like tiny pirates r- r- commanding this huge airship. That, that would have been really comedic. <laughs> uh, I, I don't mind the way that they play it on the movie. It's fine still. But wouldn't that be really funny? Like you have these huge airships commanded by this teeny tiny Captain Solano. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that and every be... now and then she has to go, Ka-ka! oh, sorry. <laughs> it's kind of a reflex. I cannot help it. Oh, that would be something. It, it all... It all turns out they're highly racist. <laughs> oh, God. They are. <clears throat> oh, God. But, but if, if if Abyssinia is full affinity, those pirates come straight from DeviantArt. So, oh, God, um, no. Uh, no, it's an attack, of the, it's attack on the internet. Oh, God, it is. no, no, no. But uh, I think we're um, overlooking one character here. and Well, it's the um, hench guy, the are left th- hand uh, guy for uh, the Storm King. Who was this guy's name? Strife. Strife. Yeah. Strife. The, the left Cumulonimbus you're talking about. Yeah, like. Isn't that one of the cloudy guys from the King Sombra Siege of the Crystal Empire comic? I, I don't they, know. He looks like an Umbrum from the art style, but he's he's more, I think, to be like a sentient storm cloud or some such. Oh. Honestly, I kind of expected him to be. He has the look of something that could grow to be a, a real villain. I mean, what was it? In the original Metal Pony, there was a sentient storm cloud. Was it? An uh, evil cloud. I have no idea. I don't remember that. Yeah, talking about <clears throat> Strife, I was hoping that he would be in the movie as payback. I'm here and I want payback. And no, he wasn't. He was like dead. So, yeah... And while you look for that silver, uh, I'm going to go talk about the parrots. So the parrots here are interesting design. I do like their colors. They're really cool. And these pirate parrots are playing it safe. They don't go for big bounties. They go for small, small hauls. Like they just rob uh, cargo hauls and whatnot. And once Strife comes into the picture, tells them that, hey, we have, uh, you want big money? There's his location. Come and get it. And Solano's character here, from the very beginning, is telling that she cares about her crew. The crew are her family. She doesn't want to take unnecessary risk where it's not needed. And I can appreciate that. I really appreciate that. And then one day she's going to become queen of the pirates by finding the One Piece. Oh, God. (laughs) Yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yo. (laughs) 
Oh, God, no, God, no, God, no, God, no. Oh. <laughs> I, I went there. Yes, I did. Oh, God, no. But anywho... Anime references that not everybody will get. Oh, but God. Me. But anywho... Believe me, you've been spared. <laughs> what do you guys... By no, the way... I, I, is in One Piece like 500 or 800 episodes and it's still going? I can check. Well, Give me a second. <clears throat> the oh, Orchid no. stub is not. <laughs> <laughs> we lost Norman to the, uh, to the anime. Oh, we always well, have. While he's looking that up, I can report that the villain of G1 I was thinking of is named Arbus. Arbus. Oh, Ar- wow. Arabus. A R A B U S. Oh, Arabus. that's a badass name. That name is badass. By the way, uh, one I'm piece. Of... Sorry, one piece is already at eight hundred and seventeen. Nice. Let's see. Arabus is a malevolent cloud demon whose intention is to devour everyone's shadows to give him strength. So I could see strife. Maybe down the road he could be upgraded or have his own plans. He could become something bigger, a bigger threat. As it is that that his dismissal from the comics is something quite literal. <laughs> yeah, you've been booted from the program. Yep. Uh, but what do you guys think of Captain Solano and her crew, the pirates? I love them. I especially like the captain. She's a great contrast to the Storm King. She puts others first. She recognizes uh, weaknesses in others <clears throat> because she's been through a rough go. She talks about how the crew has emerged a family, but with a lot of damage along the way. I kind of want to know more about her individual crew members and how they lost a leg or an arm or where you get that awesome scar. And the eye patch. Always the eye patch. Yeah, and also <laughs> why that one guy is carrying three swords and that guy's a good chef. Wait, sorry, I'm mixing enemies now. God, no. I want to I want to know what happened to the guy that lost his beak. <laughs> I want to believe that's a reference to the original concept for Captain Jack Sparrow from Pirates of the Caribbean. Wow. In the original the original concept of Jack Sparrow, he was gonna have no nose <laughs> and he was gonna have like a prosthetic nose or a, a peg nose that kept moving out of place. <laughs> that was that was one of Johnny Depp's ideas. The director told him not to do that because it would have been a nightmare for the CGI artist to, to work on that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I want to think that it's a reference to that, that he lost his beak for the exact same reasons. Probably. I think he was just shooting his mouth off. <laughs> hey <Hey-o. laughs> <laughs> I'm also thinking of Dr. McNinja and his feud with pirates. The, he cut off their faces so they got peg faces. <laughs> 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 Walking around with these big old pegs on their faces with eye holes cut in. They're just going. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, uh, Dr. McNinja is absolutely glorious. Yeah, but anywho, uh, the pirate crew came in and started attacking, like a strife plans. And yay, awesome job they did it. And we're introduced to Kepper and his friend, uh, Chummers. So, yeah. And over here, we get to see that. Uh, Captain Solano here is a cool gal, uh, knowing that they're two boys away from home, lost, hungry, and whatnot. She decided to bring them in, not only as added crew member, but also as family. So that's cool. They did make a rather simple, straightforward character with uh, with Solano. She doesn't really have... Uh, and, and she has more design than character depth when it comes to who she is and what she does. Swas Buckling Adventurer turned into a uh, messenger for the Storm King, but uh, I I think they kind of wrote themselves in a corner with that because writing a kind-hearted pirate is always kind of a, a difficult thing to do. There is always an ulterior motive to pirates for acting the way they act. Uh, with Salano, there is not nothing like that. Well. She's she's too good. She's too much of a. Um, What's straightforward, nice for character. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. You both guys are right. She's too straightforward, too nice, and too much of a mother, too much of a, a mother hen. <laughs> um, to continue with the birth theme, <laughs> that that there is nothing else, n- not much else to her, or the <laughs> other than she looks cool, she's a badass, she's awesome, and she's nice. Well, uh... there is no, there is no contrast. There is too much light in there. There is not enough shadows. I, I don't know how to counter that because, well, yes, she is a pirate and she did bad stuff. She lost her leg or one of her legs. So that's got to say something about her. But I, I don't know. Uh, what, what can you say? Because we are not really introduced to her fully. We got no idea about her backstory. We got no idea 
what her motivations are besides taking care of her crew and whatnot. And basically, what that's really... perhaps the, that's perhaps the biggest failure. These comics are meant to introduce the backstory of the characters. They don't do it. They don't do it with this one. They throw her into the situation, and this is how she reacts. Yeah, I mean, like, true. It's one of those scenarios where uh, I thought they was trying to explain the backstory of the characters and whatnot. But you know what? I still enjoy this one and whatnot. And uh, we get to see Chalmers and. Kepper escape with the MacGuffin. Yay. And much hissing. Yay. So, um, let's carry on to the third book and the third characters, Chummer and his friend. Uh, Kepper. Why am I calling Chummer's first? God dang it. But anywho, uh, we got Kepper and Chummer. Is it Kepper or, is it Kepper of Kepper? Uh, I think it's Kepper. Kepper. It, it is Kepper because he has two P's. That means you have to pronounce the previous vowel like it's, uh, like it's, a uh, Straight up, yeah. no need to well, enunciate it. Well, Ka- Capper, I told you that if you have two Ps, you should have gone before we left. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But anywho, Capper and Chummers are buddies. They head into the town of uh, Cl- Clugtown. That's how you say it. Yep, Clugtown, yeah. where everything's for sale. Yep. So Clugtown, everything's for sale. Everybody wants to blackstep you. You'll never find another terrible. Uh, you never, uh, you you'll never find a. Uh, uh, how does that Star Wars line go? You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Thank you, Silver. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so that's clock down. So it, it <coughs> seems that our two heroes here do what they do best, um, like cheat and steal. So yay, they do that, and they get uh, outed by a naked mole rat named Varco. Verco. Berko, Berko, yeah. Is he a mole rat? I always thought he was he was just a, a, a mole. Sorry, he is a naked mole rat, by the way. So, yes. Uh, Put some clothes on. <laughs> he, this ain't a quest for you. He did. <laughs> uh, he did, towards the end of the comic. Uh, um, it's, it's weird. Will you take any page of this comic, present it to... Go back into 2013, and give this comic to anyone. Don't show them the cover, don't show them the intro at the beginning. Just give them the comic, and tell them... This is a My Little Pony comic. They will tell you to get out. <laughs> yep. You don't even have to They go will tell you you're lying. You don't have to go even that far, Silver. You don't have to go to 2003. Just put this... It's James! You did that again! We don't even sound that alike. Are you okay, Norman? No, it's, okay. it's the two-man thing. But anyway, James, uh, you don't need to go that far. Just early of 2017, January. Just show somebody this and people will say... Hey, uh, did Andy Price drew a furry comic? Huh. That's strange. Why would uh, he do that? I have seen plenty of comics on DeviantArt to know where this is going. <laughs> I'm just saying this comic here, man. I'm not going to say anything else. Uh, but still, I know what you mean. And this comic issue here, if it's not because of some of the pony reference, like that one third poster of Chrysalis, it has nothing to do with ponies. Well, that's kind of a... A uh, nice thing. We get to see the world outside Equestria without a pony uh, to contrast. It's like, this is just how the world is. It's not, oh, this world needs friendships. No, this is just, oh, this is how the world is. In fact, talking about friendship, uh, especially between Capra and Chummer, I was tempted to get my doom flag for this. Like, take a shot every time they say, we're good friends and we'll never betray one another. <laughs> yes. <laughs> never betray. Red light, red light, red flags, red flags. There's signals flags all over this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, y'all gonna be doomed. Hey, is Tomo wearing a red shirt? No, Might as well no. be. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but Caper is wearing a red uh, trench coat towards the end of the comic. Oh god. But still. He cleans up well. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, but still, um, uh, Tomo and Caper here, uh, I don't know why, but uh, I think it's because of that silly gem, the Misfortune MacGuffin. It seems that w- the MacGuffin Malachi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure it is. No. Everyone says, "Oh, the Misfortune Malachi brings great woe," but everyone wants it because it's magical. And you're just like, "Well, is it the gem that's making this happen, or are you just using it as an excuse to bring misfortune?" I'm just saying that this is a self-fulfilling prophecy, where they say that, "Oh, whoever has the gem uh, has misfortune fell upon them." Oh. 
if you really think about it, <laughs> if you really think about it for a uh, Kepper's story here, if he would just go with the plan, don't betray anyone, just go with the plan, seriously, they would have been scot-free flying around wherever they want to go, uh, being rich and wealthy. Yet, yeah, it's all good. But no, nah, they had to betray one another and see what happens here. Like, I, that, that McGuffin there is just a self-fulfilling prophecy. The betrayal did came out of nowhere, but it, it it's it's there to serve a purpose. It it's there to explain why Copper became the way that he became. That out of all the and we have been following him for three issues already, mm -hmm. so that's why I say, oh, he's the emotional core of the story. He is the one character that we've been following since the Storm King uh, comic uh, comic issue, which is why to me it makes no sense. Oh, his story ends here. Okay, perfect. Three stories, three three issues, cut, print, it's done, over. Oh, wait a minute, there is a fourth one? Why? You know, out of all the characters that don't need a backstory, that's Tempest, because we get that in the movie. We didn't need the Tempest comic. I, li I, I like it, but we don't need it. You know what, I'm, let's go to the Tempest comic after this, but I have to say for Capra's comic here, on page 21, I think in the second last panel of him standing up, in uh with the flames behind him that was just sorry that was not capper that was uh chummers that scene there that pose there was just so cool like yeah you go my friend you're gonna die as a cool badass yeah they did make the mistake of selling to the wrong guy because there was a stall owner who was loudly declaring mcguffins for sale <laughs> it's like how do you how do you miss that <laughs> there's truth in advertising right there you know where that is <laughs> true true uh and let's head on to the fourth comic with Tempest. Um, um, who wants to take this one? Because this comic here is... Mm. It makes Tempest very unlikable. Yep, yeah, true, true. But that's her whole MO. Um, she's like, I don't need anyone. I'm work I work alone. I best work alone. Die, die, die. I think it's. A, I agree with Silver 100%. It, did, it it does make a disservice to the character of Tempest. You're supposed to feel sympathetic towards her. You're supposed to feel something for her, which the movie makes really well. True. Uh, in this one, she comes off as a complete and absolute jerk. Once she met Wanderer, the, the other pony, it's like, oh, is he going to betray her? It's like showing that the outside world can even corrupt a usually no, innocent ponies. No, she betrays him. And it's like, wait, is that the last we see of him? But And then when you find out that this invasion of Equestria is her idea, it's like, oh, you sell out. Well, that's her. Like, I don't mind that, to be honest, because her whole MO from the very beginning was uh, don't trust anybody else but yourself. Uh, everybody else is just going to drag you down. You can only trust yourself. So that's been her whole MO. And... With this one here, yeah, um, her whole travel, um, she traveled far across the land, searching far and wide, each Pokemon to catch them all, something like that. And her uh, whole journey is... It's funny, yeah, her, her whole No, but I, you know what Silver is saying, you're, you're right. I mean, remember what people were, were saying about Starlight Glimmer before, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a parallel between Glimmy and, and, uh, and Tempe, uh, right here. I'm not gonna call them any differently, yeah. so uh, get used to that. Uh, with uh, Starlight Glimmer, with uh, with her, she en enslaved an entire village and then tried to take away the cutie marks of the main characters because she got uh, she she got an apparent bad childhood and she was carrying all that baggage, so it ended up turning her into that. And with Tempest, we have her getting uh, her horn swept off by Nursa Minor when she was a when she was a filly. And apparently that carries so much anger from there that she comes up with the invasion for uh, that the invasion, the invasion in Equestria and the, at the beginning of the movie. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, people only now are starting... I have no idea how people were accepting of season six and the way that Starlight Glimmer was evolving throughout that. I I personally loved it, the way that they, they tackled Glimmy on season six. But only now people are openly accepting Starlight the way that she is. People had no problem accepting Tempest the way that she is on the movie. But in this comic, if more people have read this comic, I'm pretty sure none of them would be so willing to say, oh, 
Look at you, you cute angel. Let me just fix you. I want you to make you feel better. They would have been so, uh, so against Tempest, the same way they were, they were against uh, Gleamy. So. Tempest has her own problems in an overall character structure, and it starts here. And yeah, okay, her quest here is to find a way to fix her horn. But at the very beginning here, she doesn't really tell that, oh, I'm on a quest to fix my horn. She says that after I lost so much, and now I am far from Equestria. It's like, okay, uh, did you and your buddy went on an awesome adventure and somehow your friend passed away or betrayed you or died? Then you got a broken horn and an awesome scar? Like, the setup was perfect for uh adventure or a main hero who uh, lost something precious and is trying to find a uh, phoenix down to revive her friend, something like that. It's like, Eh, no, she's just emo because she lost her horn in childhood and nobody was nice to her. Hmm. I'm on a never-ending quest to save my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've we gotten there. We are making references to Drone together. Yes, I miss this. Uh, but, but anywho, but anywho. Tempest here finds the MacGuffin and she kind of plays around with it. And said MacGuffin says, Oh no, I am a very bad misfortune thingy. The power is a trap. No, you should totally throw me away. Like, get rid of it. No. And Tempest here says, Yes, I shall use its power to fix my horn. Ha ha. Now, to get out of this town. Now they have a pill for that. (laughs) Hmm. No. You just need a plastic surgeon. Oh god, no. But hey. But But if your horn is up for more than four hours, you have to call a position. Oh, God. Yeah. You you need to be careful with that. Yeah, but but anywho, but... uh, You can lose it again. (laughs) But anywho. Tempest here meets up with a pony, like you guys mentioned. What's his name again? Um, Wanderer. Wanderer, Wanderer. yes. So, she takes a ride to... I got no idea what's the goal here. So, she just takes a ride... The the goal was get to the cabin of the few, the the hateful eight. <laughs> yeah, all right, let's go with that one. So she hits her right with them, and in a quick flashback, we see oh she lost her horn when she was a kid. Oh no, how did that happen? Oh, oh, eh, eh. <laughs> I love how enthusiastic you sound when talking about all of this drama. <laughs> <laughs> do, oh no, how do I? How do I they even? T- they took his dog. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> how do I even? I'm... Yeah, right. Let's go. They took Jerry's dog. I mean, you're kind of you're pulling a Willy Wonka here. No, stop! Come back, please. <laughs> help! Help! <laughs> but but anyway, let's let's carry on. Uh, so <clears throat> the Storm King arrive and uh, is hunting down Tempest for the gem. So Tempest here has a great idea of, hey, uh, guy, I just met. Why don't you put my cape on and run the other way? Great idea! I'll do it. <laughs> and so he did. And while Guy runs away, Tempest, well, kind of walks the other way. And thinking that it was a great idea, uh, she runs into the Storm King. In page 17, he has an awesome pose. That first panel there, wow, that was just good. Look at that pose, man. Yeah, what a poser. <laughs> yeah. So anywho, the Storm King here says, what are you? And she says, I'm a unicorn, I have powers or something like that. And the Storm King says, you know what? I'm in the middle of restructuring, and I could use a pony like you to be my right-hand man. How about it? You pay the price of giving me that gem, and I'll do whatever you want. Wouldn't it be front right hoof mare eh. instead of right-hand man? Potato, potato. So anywho, Tempest here agrees and says, uh, this gem here, it says to be cursed. And I don't believe in bad luck. Uh, luck is what we make of it. And the Storm King here says, I do, and crushes it. Like, what? Why? He doesn't want to risk giving something else control. Yeah, yeah. He wants to He wants to know that he's in charge always. Yeah, but the thing is, this is the MacGuffin that we have been following the entire, the, these four comics. And he just crushes it with... Uh, with one hand, rendering that whole thing completely meaningless. So the purpose of the of that Malachite was just to connect all of these four characters. I mean, as a plot device, as a storytelling device, it works. 
but within the context of it, it makes no sense. You know what I thought it was at the beginning? What? I thought that's where all those uh, petrifying orbs they use in the movie come from. Because the Malachite looks very much like those orbs. I thought, oh, that's the thing that is petrifying. That, that's the power they use to petrify all, all the princesses. Yep, it makes sense. It makes sense. I thought that was that, but it isn't? Okay. Oh, oh. And this goes on. Hey, uh, Tempest here has a bright idea of, you want magic? I know a place with magic. It's at my home. Let's go there. I think you'll like the Haystack Burger Place. It's really good. It's good for marketing and branding. And comic ends. And then a new song starts up. Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal me! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so, with that, what do you guys think of this comic? Like, is it any fun? Is it pointless in the end? It's like, what do you guys think overall? Silver? I think it, it was a good introduction to these characters before the movie, and it does give uh, a little bit of backstory. Like you guys say, with, especially with the pirates, we don't know how they became pirates, but we know how they ended up under the Storm King's heel. We don't know a lot about Tempest's background, but we know how she fell into his service. And then you find out that she's... I will say that probably Tempest is the least likable in these comics because you see her betray her home. And you realize all the misfortune we're about to witness in this movie stems from her, which makes, I think, her redemption a little bit more sour. But we'll talk about that in the uh, in the movie proper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do like that Capra and Shummer are sort of the golden thread weaving them all together. Even even the wreckage of Shummer's escape ties into Tempest's uh, backstory. Though he may have actually limped away, so he and, and Strife are just like sitting off on, on the off panel playing poker in uh, continuity limbo. Think they'll find your uh, corpse? Ah, who knows. So what about you, James? What do you think? I think the comics are like icing on a cake. It's not you don't need it, but it's a nice thing to have. Um I have to say not having the comics would have made the experience of watching the movie a little bit more confusing. Uh but the movie gives you enough uh, that you don't need to read the comics. Uh, so, th- th- they're fine. I don't think there is anything that should be removed or taken. I don't think any of the comics is god-awful, nor do I think any of the comics is the best thing ever. They are just uh, there. They serve their purpose. They nicely introduce all the characters. And while they do mess with a couple of the character- uh, characterizations, like, uh, like Silver said, and I agreed with him, Tempest's comic just is a complete service to the character. And there is the issue of the first three comics are everything you need because it's a contained storyline that uh, follows the character of Capper. They, they're fine. I definitely don't regret buying it. I don't regret reading it. And I don't regret having it. And just for the visual exp- splendor, like I said, the artwork is the best part of the comic. It's like Andy Price was just getting uh, getting out of ponies for a moment and he was like, Okay, no more hoofed animals for a couple of issues, please. Can I just draw something other than horses? And that's that's what it felt like because he was having a lot of fun with with those backgrounds and Heather Breckle's colors are always gorgeous to look at. Like I said, don't need them, but it's it's nice to have them. All right, all right. And as for me, even though I had a lot of gripe with it, it's fun. It's a fun comic for the introduction of the newer characters gripes aside had fun i highly enjoyed the comics would i recommend it uh yes is it needed for the movie not really um except for capper story which does explain a bit about his debt to varco uh varco 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 yes so it does explain a bit and yes um it's fun and yeah it ties in well it ties in nicely with the whole Thing for the comics and whatnot, and yeah, what can I say? Like next up is the movie, so uh, let's end it here. So, anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com and also Coffee.com. 
with every support you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content and a huge thank you from me talking about thank you i like to thank Lurka, cat and Star starstream master lag amy and also mark thank you so much for the awesome support guys so anywho i have been norman santo i am the silver quill and i uh, have been a confused spaniard that i have no idea how i stumbled upon this what happened Anywho, we'll guys catch you with the movie review next. So join us for that one. See ya. Adios. Bye. It lives. It lives. People at home will be so confused. <laughs> SMI. What? What the hoo ha? Hey. Maybe you just need to wake up. Yeah.